Hi, in this video from Suvi Eye Hospital, Kota, Rajasthan, we describe the management of traumatic cataracts and the various aspects in traumatic cataracts like irodelenticular adhesions, posterior capsular plaques, small fibrotic pupils and calcified capsules etc. With increasing incidence of trauma due to various cases, it is also becoming common to see different types of traumatic cataracts in our ophthalmological practices. If there is a small localized visually insignificant cataract because of a localized trauma, then it may be prudent to just observe the cataract for any progression over a period of time. However, if there is a visually significant cataract, then the optimal timing to remove these cataracts is at about 4-6 to six weeks following the primary repair if that was done in the form of corneal repair so that the inflammation has subsided by this time. Also, in all these cases, there must always be a thorough evaluation for any associated injuries to other parts of the eye and their surgical management needs to be planned. Especially when planning a cataract surgery, we need to evaluate in a well-dilated pupil and try to look for any capsular injuries which need to be managed along with the cataract surgery. And before undertaking any surgery in all these traumatic cases, it is extremely crucial to perform radiological studies to exclude any retained intraocular foreign body not only from the management point of view but also for medical legal purposes. So in this video we have two illustrative cases of traumatic cataracts and show their management. Now this is a case of a traumatic cataract which has a fairly fibrotic membranous cataract, iridolenticular synechiae, the pupil is bound down to the capsule and the cataract is white in color. So we have to be well prepared and carefully plan these surgeries and as we may have to deal with a variety of problems in these cases. This is an irregular pupil and because it had not dilated, we first inject intracameral uh, preservative-free lignocaine into the anterior chamber and under an air bubble or with the soft shell technique, we uh, stain the anterior capsule. It is also a good idea to use viscoat or z hyaline etc which can protect the corneal endothelium well in the case of additional maneuvers needed in these surgeries. After capsular staining, we use a dry stale or a Vizilon cannula or an iris hook or some such instrument to reduce the uh, iridolenticular synechiae. And we can then use a Kruglin two hook technique to stretch the pupil and enlarge the pupil. The pupillary stretch technique is sometimes not favored because of the fact that it may release prostaglandins from the iris which may further uh, cause pupillary constriction during the surgery. However, in these traumatic cases, in some selected cases, it can give very good results and give a fairly uh, adequately sized pupil. Once we have an adequate sized pupil, we perform capsular excess which again has to be very careful because the capsule may be fibrotic and adherent to the iris. And this capsular excess may have to be performed exactly at the pupillary margin in cases of not so big uh, or enlarged pupils. Once we have an adequately sized pupil and a good capsular excess, the rest of the surgery is not particularly difficult as compared to other surgeries. Some of these cataracts may be partially absorbed and the posterior capsule may also have pre-existent defects. Therefore, we need to be careful while performing the surgery and be specially gentle towards the posterior capsule. Nuclear rotation again needs to be careful, especially when a posterior capsule tear or dehiscence is suspected and the movement should be gentle as compared to any routine case. Now we can see that there are some membranous bits uh, which are lying under the uh, iris and they may be very tenacious to remove. We perform an irrigation aspiration and suddenly we are faced with this uh, capsule plaque that has fortunately come out easily without much manipulation otherwise these capsular plaques on the anterior or posterior capsule are usually very tenacious and extremely difficult to remove. The plaque sometimes comes off with good viscodissection and irrigation aspiration but it may actually need a very uh, technically skillful plaque peeling sometimes or sometimes we may even have to do a posterior capsular excess. This is another plaque being removed from another case. We implanted a standard hydrophobic acrylic uh, IOL in uh, this case. And the IOL was carefully dialed into the bag. Some of these traumatic cases may have compromised uh, capsular bags or compromised zonules and then the surgical technique needs to be varied accordingly.
Because there is increased trauma in these cases uh, with uh, manipulation of the iris, we must do a good uh, AC wash at the end of the surgery and uh, remove any debris that there may be present in the anterior chamber. We also sometimes use intracameral preservative free triamcinolone to provide some post-operative anti-inflammatory effects in these uh, operated cases and also in those cases where we need to see whether there are any vitreous strands to stain the vitreous fibers. So to summarize, traumatic cataracts can pose special challenges in management as they have small irregular pupils with iridolenticular and iridocapsular adhesions. The lens may be calcified, there may be capsular plaques which all need to be tackled. But a careful planning and being prepared for any eventuality makes uh, possible to give good results in these cases too. The second case shown here is a case where lens aspiration with multifocal IOL implantation was done in a 12-year-old child with traumatic cataract and torn anterior capsule under topical anesthesia. This child presented to us with cataract formed as a result of thorn injury. The cataract was white in color like most other traumatic cataracts and when capsule dye staining was done, a horizontal split was seen exactly in the center of the cataract. There was also some flocculent lens matter in the anterior chamber. We used a lot of uh, coating for the corneal endothelium to avoid any damage to the corneal endothelium. And because this was a small child of 12 years and the cataract was expectedly soft, a bimanual irrigation aspiration was sufficient to remove the soft flocculent lens matter. Here you can see the uh, split in the anterior capsule very well. And while it is not standard teaching to implant multifocal IOLs in the presence of uh, any capsule injuries, because this was a child with a unilateral cataract, we, we leaned in favor of implanting a multifocal IOL because we felt that the IOL would be fairly stable and reasonably well centered. And we obviously wanted to avoid any spectacle dependence in this child. So the IOL was implanted with the haptics in the uh, intact capsular furnaces superiorly and inferiorly. The IOL was stable within the capsular bag and viscoelastic was then removed from the capsular bag as well as from under the IOL. As you can see here again, the IOL is fairly well centered and is very stable within the capsular bag. The haptics uh, remain in the capsular furnaces, which are quite adequate to give good stability to the IOL. And then, like our routine practice, we injected intracameral moxifloxacin into the anterior chamber, which is possibly even more important in these traumatic cases. So to conclude, cataract management in traumatic cataracts can be challenging, but with the availability of advanced uh, FACO machines with good fluidics and devices such as viscoelastics, dyes, uh, capsule tension rings and different kinds of IOLs, good results can be provided in these cases and we must plan the surgery well to look uh, anticipate any additional maneuvers that may be needed during the surgery thank you